Well, good morning, you guys. Before we get rolling on this video, I am going to show you what I'm using to catch these skipjack today. Uh, specifically the rod and reel and then the baits. I'm still trying to wake up. It's a little bit early. And uh, we're going to go catch a bunch of skipjack and try to catch a striper in the process. And then I'm going to show you how I vac vacuum seal and store the skipjack to be used later or sold to other people. I've um, done this for years. And this is just the best way I've found to do it. We've caught a lot of big fish, stripers, catfish with it for over a decade. And uh, it just works. It's simple. And skipjack are a blast to catch. So let's see what kind of raw we got here. Oh, one second. Okay, so as you can tell, I, I, got, I, got, I got a lot of rods. But what we're going to use today for this video is the Okuma SRT Inshore Premier. New rod I got from them that I've been using for the past week or two. It's pretty sick. It's an inshore saltwater rod. It's built for like um, snook, redfish, trout, and stuff like that. But uh, it's rated for 10 to 20 pound tests, half an ounce to ounce and a half. It's seven foot six, medium heavy, and uh, it just catches the crap out of skipjack. It's overbuilt for this, but when you're catching hundreds and hundreds of skipjack over the year, um, you need something like this. What I really like about this rod is how fast action the tip is. So it bends a little bit at the top, but then it's just a really sturdy backbone all the way through. So that lets you set the hook and basically horse the skipjack in really, really quickly. It's got uh, aluminum guides. It's a saltwater rod, so it's just built really, really heavy duty. And when you're catching tons and tons and tons and tons of skipjack, you got to have something that's going to last or you're just going to break rods because I've done it over and over and over again. I've tried to buy the cheap ones. Um, if you need to buy a cheap one, the red lightning sticks from Walmart are really good. They're like 20 something bucks. Caught lots of fish on those, but the tips break off of them a lot, but they're only 20 bucks too. And if you're not out there doing it as much as me, that'd probably be a good rod to use. Uh, but for me, I gotta have something I ain't gonna break every day, which I'll do with those uh, lightning ones. I went through like six of them in a week before and um, sometimes that's because the buddies like to close them in the truck tailgate but other times it's or a lot of times it's me just beating the crap out of stuff so that's the rod and reel i'm using i'm gonna show you the baits here in a second all right so what we're using for baits called a sabiki rig if you haven't seen it you've seen it now uh, how i've got mine tied is just a generic barrel swivel it doesn't really matter what pound test it was obviously i was using this guy the other day and then um you're going to want to space your baits. I use four on mine, three flies and a grub at the back end. But you want to space your flies, I don't know, six, eight, ten inches apart. just depends on how long your rod is, just somewhere in there. Make sure they're equidistant so they don't fly weird. And then you put your heavier jig head down at the bottom. So this is a quarter ounce jig head. And I think these are eighth ounce uh, flies or marabou jigs. And the reason why you want to put your heavier one at the bottom is because you want this thing flying first and hitting the water instead of these guys. So if one of these is heavier than this thing, the bottom one, then it gets tangled in the air. And you want to make sure you're using at least 15 to 20 pound test, either monofilament or fluorocarbon leader, because one, you're going to tangle everything up if you use smaller, like eight pound tests. And two, you're going to break skipjack off, which is a pain in the butt. Now with these, I mean, they've just torn them all the heck. I've had to bend all these hooks back several times and the flies are falling apart. Something you can do to mitigate that is just put super glue on them before you start using them. Just dab it around it. That seems to work, but you're gonna tear them up. They're cheap, but this is how I tie it and this is what I'm using. If I need to get some extra distance on the flies, like I need to throw it further, I'll pinch a couple of split shots down here at the bottom, even up to three on this bottom jig right above it, and that just lets you throw it way further. So, come along with me now to do a little striper fishing first for a little bit. We'll see if we catch one. Um, and then if not, we're gonna catch some skipjack, a bunch of them, and then vacuum seal them and freeze them for later. So, come along with me on this adventure with a uh, Top Knox fishing with your favorite ginger boy and his mustache, and catch the fish. He says hello to, what are you doing, bud? What are you doing? You go fishing? You go fishing? You go fishing? Say, no, it's raining today.
Well, good afternoon, you guys. It is a rainy Saturday here in East Tennessee before Easter Sunday, and I am up a river that I shouldn't be in my boat that has a prop on, and I'm doing a little skipjacking, white bass fishing, and striper fishing. I got one out on a planer board over there. We got some down in the tank right here, and I'm out here by myself having a good time. This video is probably gonna be a skipjack catch a tutorial on how to store them how to vacuum seal them and how to take care of them properly so you can use them throughout the year but i'm gonna throw some uh baits for some striped bass if you know what i'm saying because they running up the rivers and i want to catch one so i caught me about a 40 pounder the other night with a buddy on a different river and uh that was a blast i wasn't filming we were just fun fishing and uh, I was like, all right, maybe I'll turn the camera on. Now I already caught a bunch of skipjack and I put a striper bait out and I'm throwing a glide bait. And I was like, well, hell, let's see if we can't catch one on camera. So we're gonna see what's happening here. As you can tell, it ain't mapped. <laughs> it do be shallow. We got this little planer board out over here next to this cut. We're gonna see if something will eat it. Baby, let's go. Welcome to this episode of Top Knox Fish. Ooh, that skippy just got mega freaked out. Will a striper eat it? I don't know, but I did throw an anchor up there so I don't have to go swimming because there is current and if this boat gets off that way, it's gone. And I probably wouldn't get it back. So we got the Cat River anchor hung up on a rock up there and uh, we're seeing if we can catch a fish. I'm gonna throw this glide bait a couple more times. I threw it for about 10 minutes a little while ago basically over here in this real fast water. I'm gonna throw it over here in the slack a little bit. Then I'm gonna switch over to a red fin just for a different presentation. I don't have a whole lot of baits with me. I didn't really plan on striper fishing per se. I mean, really came just to catch the bait because I got my bait dealer license and uh, people always be asking me to buy skipjack. I used to do it in college. That's how I paid for my rent and bills in college was skipjack dealing. So I figured, why heck, why not? I got a boat now. I know where to catch skipjack. They fun. So we up here catching some skipjack. But I'm gonna throw this glide bait over on this slack water a little bit. There's not a ton of flow out here for what current can be on this river. So a lot of times you'll catch those stripers in these slack water sections when the current's just freaking ripping everywhere else. But you never know, there could be one cruising over there looking for a gizzard shad to eat or a red horse or a skipjack that lost its way out of the current. So we'll throw a glide bait a few times. That wind's picking up, so I've got my back to it. So hopefully the audio isn't poopy. Real has seen better days too. That skipjack's just freaking out over there. I hope he gets murked. If he does, there's a good bit of current over there, and that drag's gonna be daggum screaming if he does get eaten. So, best thing for me to do to assure it gets eaten is not pay attention to it. So, we're just gonna fool around with the glide bait. Ooh, that wind's chilly. It's been pouring rain, no wind, and then the rain stops, and the wind starts. But it's all right. Uh, all right, we do one more throw over here. And that little weather change will turn the stripers on. Skipjack are going nuts. I caught them down a little bit further, but I'm sure you can catch them right here too. I may even throw, what the heck. Loop, 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 loop. And I'm just walking, working that glide bait through this little current chute right here. And those stripers will sit with their nose up in this current where it funnels and uh, Wait for bait to come through and mark it. Let's throw a red fin on. 
I reckon. That sounds good to me. What about y'all? The red fin will stay down in this flow a little bit better. And it's just a different presentation because I have thrown that guy glide about 20 times in here. Hadn't seen anything. Hadn't seen a striper on that skipjack, but he's freaked out a few times. He's just chilling right now. But whatever. We get out of the boat here. We got a little waterproof boots on. We're gonna walk up, walk up the rock pile here. This is actually a Native American fish trap thing that they made all the way across the river. And they put nets right here, catch fish as they come through. And still works for other fish, except I'm not using a net, I'm just using a lure. So, it's gonna catch me a cold out here too. Soaking freaking wet. I mean, it was pouring. That's why I didn't have the camera out while I was catching skipjack. Like, cats and dogs pouring. I don't really know where that phrase comes from, but it was doing that. Need to oil this reel. It's seen better days. Some of y'all are gonna complain about it. I don't care at all. It's a workhorse, it gets used, it catches fish. And if it wants to scream, by God, it can do it. I'm gonna just work this stick bait across the top here. Just slow reeling in it, it'll right across the surface. This is just one of the classic striper baits anywhere in the whole world, country, is a redfin. All kinds of scenarios you can catch fish on it. They're cheap. It's just got a big, wide, dorky looking wobble. It's the dumbest bait. You just reel it straight. So you can rip it a little bit, but heck, most of the time they hit it when you're just reeling straight. They float so you can let it just like float across the surface and the current will make that butt wiggle a little bit once it hits it. Or you can just wake it like a wake bait if you reel real slow and keep your rod tip up and just let it stay on the surface. Or you can go real fast and get it down like three, four feet. Stop it. Reel, 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 stop. Reel, 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 stop. And they'll hit it on the paws a lot too. If they're really active, just throw it and reel and they'll mark it. There's a rock. Let's see if one's hanging out in here. Nope. We're gonna get about 10 more casts here and then we're gonna go downstream. Do a little ballooning over some deeper holes. See if we can't pull a big girl out. I'd like to see it, y'all. I'd like to see it. Got some river poop on there. Oh no, you're gonna spook the fish! No, nah, they don't care at all. You can literally, people buy devices called clunking devices that slap the top of the water next to the boat and stripers will come up to it. Cool if we caught like a little, it's a little freshwater oyster clam here. It's like a good place for a craw daddy too. And a good place for me to fall on my butt. Trying to hit, there's a little eddy over there on that bank from where that tree that logs in the water that creates. And I'm thinking a fish or two may sit behind that, but they may not, or they may not right now. I don't know. Still a little bit early in the year, but who knows. If we hook into one, it's gonna be a giant. Gonna be a giant.
Oh, somebody should Let's go buy three more casts here. And we'll call it right here. And I'm changing my retrieves up each time we're trying to. Just to see if I can elicit a strike of some kind. Right now I'm just pop pop and it makes it go like this and then it rises with the current and it's still the butt's still wiggling whenever I stop because the current's hit the nose of it. Lots of different ways to work even very simple baits to get a bite. This one we're just gonna literally wake it across the surface. I mean slower molasses. Let that little booty wiggle around top. Big giant cold front today. It's like 40 something degrees out here, 48. It's probably in the 50s now. It was 47 when it was pouring rain, so that was brutal. And it was 80 the other day here in East Tennessee. So that could mess up the big fish. The skipjack were pretty finicky too compared to what they have been. I had to go real slow and methodical. So I've I've got some three pound skips in the tank, but I've got like a 13 inch one out, out there. Um, Cause I don't know how active these stripes are gonna be. In this little while I'll run two rods. That's about all I can handle by myself on a river like this with rocks and stuff everywhere. All right, last cast here. Actually we'll do one more. I like this little eddy right here. I'm gonna cast straight up bit. We're gonna go real quick. Stop. 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 Do a sidearm cast. Alright, this is gonna be the last one right here. And then we'll do one long bomb off in the shallow water, the slack area. May throw, oh god, may throw and see if there's a skipjack up here. I lied, I'm gonna do three casts, but I backlash my reel. So one bad thing about red fins, they're really light. A lot of people throw them on spinning gear. They're just so dang light. There's a lot of wind right now, which makes it kind of a pain in the butt. Throw it. But they work, daggone it. Only crazy person out here today. And we're gonna do one straight behind the boat because that's a current scene from this rock bar and this slack stuff. And sometimes fish will sit right on that too. Surprised the silly skipjack hadn't tried to hit this thing. I like to do that. Could catch a big old smallmouth up here too. All right, that's enough of that. We're gonna bring this planer ward right in and put them on a balloon now. And then I'm gonna float back downstream. See how he's doing first. They're good planer boards. They don't click over really bad in the current. Look at that thing. Put these new clips on it that are really tight because I was having trouble with braid getting popped off in the flow because it's hard for those clips to bite on them. And boy, these work. use some boards later I don't know I didn't even really bring planer board rods these are my ballooning rods 
big long boys it's just a medium sized skip we're using I'm going to change it from a nose hook to a balloon style hooking make sure you don't hit that backbone or it's just going to kill him I'm actually going to let him chill for a second right well, I can probably put him out we're really not going to put them very deep in here because where we're going is about to be sketchier than crap about the size of a grapefruit a little bit bigger all right let them swim out there gone boy I want a clicker in case something just really crazy happens. Get this anchor in. get a scooting back here and we're gonna put this trolling motor on shallow water mode I mean this thing's barely gonna be in the water because I ain't trying to knock a prop off of it yeah it's like six inches under the surface the skipjack's already being a butthole trying to swim in the dang troll motor and we ain't even doing nothing yet I don't know if you guys can see the bottom there but it's about three feet deep right here and there's rocks all over the place and giant boulders pretty sketchy That's getting real shallow right there. Have to bring this trolling motor up. That looks super sketchy right here. We going right water rafting the pig sled today, y'all. I've got the big motor all the way up out of the water. Ooh, what could possibly go wrong? E, oh my God, that's sketchy. Oh, that made my butt pucker up. Okay, I think we're good now. Whew. That scared the crap out of him. He's about to go snag himself up. Dang it. You were so good for so long, Chippy. Oh, look. He swam up over. <laughs> I will never be able to do that again. What just happened? I will never ever be able to do that again. Good Skippy. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh my gosh, that was. Uh, 
Adrenaline! Adrenaline rush! I didn't even hook a fish! Alright, well, that guy's way out there. I'm gonna throw my little red fin around for a while now. Literally first cast, I threw it in a tree. I'm still all whacked out from the adrenaline rush I just got. Ooh, look, I got out. Look at that. Luckily, we are now getting down to some deeper water because that was scary. That one made me nervous, and you guys have seen on this channel, I do some sketchy stuff, and that one got me shaking. That one got me shaking. I mean, rightfully so, too. I just saw that boat getting stuck on a rock and flipping over. Oof. Would not have been ideal. Rock. It's funny because stripers feel like rocks most of the time when they hit. It's just like thunk. And then they start peeling line. Do it real slow through here. Mr. Skippy starting to freak out a little bit. How fast can I catch a skippy? Lots of mini little baby ones. Look at these little fellers. Oh, there's a little bit better one. The answer is, oh, I have a double pretty quickly. A big guy. And a little guy. Very nice. A big giant dude out now, single hook rigging it. I may regret this, but that's all I've been able to get him to chase on lately. The striper is a single hook rig. The double, they swim differently. Sometimes they want the double, makes them swim in a little bit more uniform in a straight line. But the last couple we've caught have been on this single hook rig. So that's what we're gonna do, I reckon. Give this one about 15 feet to play with. The other one's got about 10, so they're different depths. I ain't got a clue which one they want right now. But I'm gonna do both. This is gonna be fun to do by myself. But we're gonna take them down this deep bank here. See if we can pull out a big old fat free spawn stri striper. Let me shave this mustache, Lord. Pink one just got hit. Yeah, 
freaking Osprey's coming down to hit it. Get the f out of here! Hey! Osprey. Oh yeah, that guy got bonks right there on the underbelly and right here. Look at that. Just didn't get the hook. He actually turned the hook around. Rehooked itself. Weird. Rebaited up with that fresh one because he got just murked. Shrapper's been finicky lately. They've just been popping stuff. Weird. Well, pretty deep now, so we're gonna give him the ability to run a little deeper if he'll do it. Oh my goodness. Man, I had three on. <laughs> and this big guy is the only one that stayed on. That gum it. Oh, we skipjacking. I thought I feel this bait tank up with a hundred skipjack. Snagged on some stuff. Watch this, dudes. Watch this, fellers and ladies. We're gonna zing her out there. We're gonna let her sink. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. We're gonna start reeling. Pop, 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 pop. Three Mississippi may, may have been too many Mississippis. Nope. Oh, missed him. Dang it. Missed him. Missed him. Missed him. All right. We're gonna throw it to the right hand side of the boat. Let's just count down. One, two, Mississippi. All right. Let's see. Pop, pop, pop. Oh yeah. Ooh, two Mississippi's the magic. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Come on. Oh, they all over it. Got him. Got him. Got him. Oh, we got a double. We got a double. Oh, we came off. We got a single. We got one. We had a double. Oh. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. Skip Jack in. Oh, yeah, baby. We catching them. Skip Jacks for bait. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. All right, let's go. Pop, pop. Oh, got him. Got him. Yeah. Oh, we got a double. We got a double, y'all. Oh, we may have a triple. What we got? We definitely got a double. Oh, no. One of them came off. 
We may just have one now. No, we got dough. We got dough. Oh, double. Hey. <laughs> it's a skipjack bonanza. Skipjack a bonanza. Oh, I snagged my jig and my net down there. We're going to catch a butt ton of skips. And then we're going to pull a couple of them down where we got hit earlier. And then I'm going home and vacuum sealing. And that ain't going to be fun. But it's got to be done. And someone's got to do it. And I am the master baiter. So I'm the one who's going to do it. B A I T E R. Bater. Oh, miss. Hey, come on. Come on, baby. Missed him. Come on. Come on. Eat the jig, Mr. Skippy. Missed him. Now, I didn't let it sink that time. My jig's falling apart. I ain't happy in there. And they're little. Skippy jacuzzi. We got one, y'all. We got one. Can we get two? Let's let him swim for a second. Let's let him swim for a second. No, we just got one. There we go. There we go. That guy was not coming off. Jeez, he inhaled it. A hard time getting that jig out. Guess another. All these skipjack are feeding on these flies on the surface. You can tell that they're busting just all over the place. And they're not little shad, they're just flies floating down the river. They turn the gins on way upstream and uh, it's pushing these flies down from wherever they were chilling because now they're all over the water and the skipjack are just daggum going nuts. There's one. There's one. Another one tried to hit her at the boat. I'm gonna catch a couple more for camera and then I'm turning it off and I'm playing some music and big chilling. Cause you guys have probably seen enough skitjacking for the day. I know it's a blast, but I gotta have some time for me to chill. And I'm gonna listen to some music and catch me some more. That's skipjack. But when we go back striper fishing, I'll be back with you. There's a little guy. About had a double one. That's a hole baiter right there for catfish. Fillet the side of it down, chop the tail off. Hole baiter. Alrighty guys, this is the last cast you will see for Skipjack tonight. Possibly. Sounds like there's another storm rolling in. I really don't want to get soaking wet again. I'm finally kind of drying off. Got one. Oh, oh, we got a double. We got a double, baby. We got a double. Stay on, stay on. Stay on. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Double. One unhooked himself right in the tank. That's what we like to see, y'all. That's what we like to see here. With Top Knox fishing. We got our skipjack trained. Colin hooked himself straight into the bait tank. Man, he wasn't going nowhere. Got him good. Yeah, there. I'm gonna hook that. All right, that's it for the night for skips. Well, it's the morning after the skipjack escapades and Brian and I are now processing the skipjack that have been on ice all night and are freezing cold because it got down to 40. But first thing you want to do is cut the tails off so that you're not wasting vacuum bag space with stuff you ain't going to use for bait. So that's what Brian is doing here. We're not cutting into the meat. We're just cutting the fins off. Just get you some shears, pop them off. It'll save you a bunch of money on bags and then throw them over there 
there we'll get you a pile and then i'm gonna start vacuum sealing after that but that's what we're doing got to get those tails off the bait you can see all that oil this is why catfish and striper love it look at all that oil and then that just permeates down the water whenever you're you're fishing so these things are halfway frozen already because it got so cold last night and they were on ice but different sizes and then we're going to start vacuum sealing them after that some big giant ones in there as you saw me catching yesterday but pretty cool so we've got our skipjack we've already done most of them down there but we've got the tails cut off of them this is just a vac sealer food saver you can buy from walmart um, i'm going to get a chamber sealer here soon which will help me do this a lot quicker um, but this guy lets you cut the size of bags for the size of skips you need and it's a heat sealer so it seals it with heat so on some of the big giant ones you can pack them individually the smaller guys you can pack them like this one thing i would advise you doing is just rubbing some of the slime off with your hands a little bit because it makes it easier to seal um, or you can uh, while you're vacuum sealing get all the tails cut off and lay them down on a, a piece of cardboard or something like that and just let them dry out a little bit to get that ton of slime off and it'll seal way better because they've already got so much oil and everything but you put them in there head first like this and this is going to be a single guy so we want to make sure that there's no scales or anything near where uh, the chamber comes down and sucks stuff out so i'll get that off we're just using an old t-shirt here thank you brian i uh, found in brian's garage and we're going to get that gunk off of it just so it seals correctly because that's really important and then this guy just open it up like that we'll stick it in there and you push down and it just does all the work for you and these will stay good for several months i've caught lots of big fish on it we caught these last night immediately put them on ice and um our vacuum seal them here early this morning and then we'll put them straight in the freezer to sell later or use later ourselves and then it's right now it just finished sucking all the air out now it's sealing it it's a heat seal and then do 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 jeopardy music it just finished there you go there's you a perfectly vacuum sealed skipjack right there and then we'll immediately get it frozen but you can tell it's still got all the a lot of oils and juices and everything in there and since we put these guys on ice and vacuum sealed them within a few hours um this is still going to bleed once it thaws out similar to how it's fresh now fresh is always better fresh is always the best but this is a close second and you can catch lots of big fish on these vacuum sealed baits when you take care of them. So that's basically how I do it. I cut these tails off because I don't ever use them for bait and they take up another couple inches of, of back space. And uh, you know, it just saves you a little money, saves you a little time. And now we got a bunch of perfectly sealed baits. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And they are going in the freezer, getting shipped out to you guys and whoever else wants them. Thanks for watching this episode of Top Knox Fishing. We'll catch you on the next one with some big fish.